Hey, welcome. Uh, I was editing some video and I realized that I am behind. I, I'm behind on getting people caught up to date with the build. And that pains me a little bit because um, I enjoy making the movies almost as much as I enjoy making the plane. But here's the deal. I want to clear some of the backlog. And in order to do that, I'm going to gloss over some of the more mundane details and do just an all-encompassing snapshot of where the build is today. Uh, we're covering things like gear weldments, seats, uh, forward dash, static system. There's a lot that I'm going to try and cram in here, so we might move pretty quick. Currently, I have the place cleaned up. I'm waiting on some primer to cure. Uh, I'm also waiting on some tools and some parts, hence me having some time on my hands to do sort of a house cleaning, if you will, when it comes to the videos. Let's do a little quick tour of the plane, and as we work through, we'll look back at some of the footage that got us here to this point. The gear weldments have been in for a while, um, but I don't believe I've ever talked about them, and, and I apologize for that. If I have talked about them, I apologize anyways, because you're about to hear this crap again. Um, but I did, I got the gear weldments in, and I even have the gear legs in. Um, they're just friction fit at this time. I haven't bolted them, because I figured they would be in the way, and I'd wind up taking them out. Truth is, they're not. I really just kind of step around them, uh, and I'm so used to stepping around things in this garage, it's not a big deal. So I may wind up throwing that bolt in there and just leaving them in. The weldments were a bit of a pain to fit. In fact, I did one off camera, and then I went ahead and took what I learned to do the other one, keeping it a little bit quicker on film. So let's take a look at this second weldment and what it took to get it in place. The first step is pre-drilling the leg to the mount. So we have this big weldment that sits inside the plane um, and into that plugs the actual landing gear leg itself. Here we have uh, the landing gear leg and the weldment. And the weldment, of course, on the inside of the plane, the leg uh, extends through the fuselage, the bottom of the fuselage, ultimately down to the brakes and the wheel. Our first step is to mate these two up uh, and align this pilot hole that we will then ream out to full size. What I found is that this powder coating has a little bit of a lip and it extends just a little too far. So I've had to soften that uh, with a bit of sandpaper and then similarly, just sand uh, away any stray powder coating um, or burrs on the inside of this piece, clean everything, and then it tends to fit pretty well. The instructions have you install a couple nut plates early on, I think, when we first start messing with the bulkheads um, and the center spar. Those nut plates never should have been installed. We cannot, simply cannot get the interior weldment position with those in place. Another thing that needs to come out if you've got it in is the spacer between the two center spar pieces. Uh, we constructed a spacer and a bolt that goes through that, and you actually need a little bit of flex in order to squeeze this thing in. This piece is gonna to have to come out as well. It's gonna be right in our way. Once we start to get it in, I found out that the elliptical hole that I drilled in the bottom skin that was so perfect fitting is a little too perfect fitting. So we have to widen that all around. And, and this is a very uh, arduous and iterative piece of work. And it takes some time, um, a lot of, of moving this weldment in and out and in and out in order to get that uh, hole opened up so that this uh, weldment will finally stay seated. Um, even when you have it in, you, you wanna take a look uh, often I noticed there are still little places of contact that were preventing 
um, a really uh, snug fit of that weldment. Um, and I didn't notice this at first on the first one, and I was having trouble getting the, the weldment bolts in and out. And then once I readjusted that, I found things would actually slide in and out a lot easier. Once we've got this thing fitting, uh, again, it's time to take it out. I made sure all the bolts fit through the weldment and, and that the powder coating wasn't preventing a, a, an easy pass for those bolts. Something I missed earlier that we are going to have to adjust is the weldment itself. Now, one of those rivets I just drove in is going to wind up interfering with this, and I figured the best way that we can do it, rather than severely oversetting or even just omitting that rivet, is just to make a little notch on the weldment. Now, we want to be careful here, absolutely no sharp corners. We don't want to reduce the structural integrity of this uh, weldment, but there is a little corner, just an ear, that we can trim a little bit and allow this to seat that much better. While it's out, uh, there's one bolt that requires a washer, and this washer is, is gonna be next to impossible to try and get in place without a little additional help. What I did is a very, very light mist of uh, spray adhesive, and I stuck that to the back of the uh, weldman. You, you, you can also use hairspray here or anything just to kind of keep it in place, and then once that washer was stuck, I put the weldment in, and then that's the first bolt to go through before that washer simply falls off. Um, I, I went ahead and started torquing down bolts. Some of these are really hard to get to. You, you either need small hands um, or an extended screwdriver. It's a little bit of playing ring toss with washers and, and using a magnetic wand to get things aligned in there. Uh, once you do start getting them torqued down, it goes pretty simply. There are five bolts that go from the outside of the plane to the inside of the plane. These will be hidden by the wing root, um, but you need to take the holes that are pre-punched in the skin and widen them up to, uh, what is it, a number 12 or number 19, I forget which, in order to get the um, number three bolts through. Uh, once you get all five of those through, you can go ahead and start torquing those down. Uh, and then the last piece of the puzzle are some forward bolts for this weldment. The forward bolts need pilot holes drilled as well. One of these pilot holes is extraordinarily difficult to locate because it's inaccessible uh, even with a, a long drill bit or a right angle drill bit. It's tucked back behind the flange of one of the forward fuselage ribs uh, and I had to just do some careful measuring and plot this on the outside so that my hole when drilled perpendicular to the skin came through right where it should. Um, and, and by, again, careful measuring and probably a little bit of luck, I was able to get that in. Once those holes are drilled, you're able to put in some countersunk screws and torque those bolts down. And then you have it. Then the weldment's in. I went ahead and put my uh, gear legs in place because I just wanted to see how it looked and make sure everything fit. They are going to have to come out because there's no sense in tripping over these as I continue to work on the fuselage. Thanks for checking out uh, how I got the gear installed on the RV7. I cannot wait for you to join me next time. No, 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 not yet. You certainly can't miss the fact that the seats are in place. We covered the seats pretty thoroughly, except for the final assembly. Um, and that was, for the most part, straightforward.
Right now these are just set in place. I found it's really uh, helpful to be able to just pull them out and, and have the room to work. Uh, but if I want to, I have the pins down here. I can set them in fairly permanently, or at least how they will be uh, when the plane is finished. So with the seats in, let's take a look at what I did back behind the baggage wall. So I got my gussets in place here, uh, something that we drilled with the skin on to make sure that the placement was correct, but then had to remove the skin, of course, to get them in. With the gussets in, I was free to go ahead and run the static line. Now, the static line was a freaking fiasco, and it was a major lesson in just read the freaking instructions. Um, I screwed this up about every way I possibly could. Uh, everything from the wrong diameter tubing on some of this to the wrong placement of the static piece itself. Uh, let's take a look at this blunder. I feel like this part has way more impact if you know that that's not where the static port's supposed to go. I'm sure some of you are having fun watching me struggle, but this, this goes on for a while and, and watching it is rough. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. Well, this officially sucks. Uh, I just found out that um, I put the static port in the wrong spot. Uh, and you got to be wondering, how does one do that? This is an error that's been months and months in the making, starting way back when I was working on the bulkheads at the first time, I accidentally drilled the wrong bulkhead for uh, the static tube. And I did this because I wound up having to wait to, to work on one bulkhead, I think for a back ordered part. And so I hopped to the next and I was looking at the wrong plans and I wound up putting uh, some holes in the wrong spot. Uh, I checked with support. They said, yeah, just keep building. It's not a problem. So here we are today. I was going off of the static system insert that is provided when you buy the static system. And there's a couple dotted lines and it made me think that, oh, okay, uh, second bulkhead back from the cabin. Um, and then it said for specific dimensions, go ahead and check your plans. And I checked my plans and I got the dimensions off of that, failing to notice that right above that, uh, it actually calls out the exact bulkhead that we should be pulling these dimensions from and it's one back from where I'm at. So then when I translate this up to the fuselage, 
Um, everything looks great because I've got holes to run my static tubing, except those are the wrong holes that I drilled like months ago. It was never really a visual cue to call out that I should actually be running this line one bulkhead back. Wow, that is a lot of excuses I just made for myself. The only hope is that uh, this is in fact suggested static port location. Uh, that word suggested gives me a glimmer of hope that it might work where it's at. Uh, I would totally redo this and run it back, except for I now have a hole and a rivet in the side of my plane that I don't really want to plug with an oops rivet or something else like that. So once again, back to van support, I'll give them a call and I'll see if uh, the system should work fine right here or if they anticipate any problems. All right, so it's been some time, uh, but I'm not very happy with this. In fact, pulling on this, you can tell the only thing really holding that on is that goop around the outside. Um, and that's just not that great. So I called Vance, uh, not only about the position of it, whoops, but about the, the holding power of that rivet and the RTV, uh, and if that's really the optimal way to go. They said, no, it's not. In fact, they have a static kit. And I said, well, yeah, I ordered the static kit. And he said, yeah, you ordered the static kit that comes with the fuselage, and that's all this tubing and stuff. But we have a separate static kit, inconveniently also titled static kit, that is uh, just some simple static ports that have ribbed flanges um, on the static port to help keep these tubes on. So I went ahead and ordered that. Looks like it's from Show Planes. It has more substantial hardware. It, it's just better in every single way. So I'm gonna pull this off, clean it up, and we're gonna try this again. Despite my appreciation for the new hardware, it still hasn't dawned on me that I'm utilizing the wrong tubing for some of this. I'm gonna damage something doing this, and it's entirely aggravating. As usual, I had every excuse in the book as to why I couldn't do this right. None of it, of course, being my fault. Um, but the fact is, I really just needed to slow down on some of it. Now, it's in, and I actually like it. This is the, the wrong tubing. In fact, there is some smaller tubing that's supposed to make this actual run. Of course, I went ahead and, and blathered on about how this tubing's better. Learning a lot, and one of the things I learned, very stiff tubing I've been bemoaning is for a reason. Stiff tubing can't kink. Uh, soft tubing can kink and cut off your airflow. Um, but it's, it's not what the instructions called for. However, it'll work. It's on there firm. It's not going anywhere. I kind of like it better, so I'm gonna leave it. I did check the alternative static placement with vans. They said, yeah, that's not a problem. Basically, I put it in the spot where it was on the RV6 before they moved it back a little bit. It was about at this section that I went and I took my trip to Kansas City, learned all about avionics, and when I came back, I was rearing to go um, with the front portion of the build so that I could put some avionics in this thing. So let's take a look at what that looked like. Knowing that I'm gonna to wanna to get some electronics into this thing ASAP, um, just because I'm excited for that, uh, I need somewhere to put them. So I'm gonna start working on the panel and the forward structure of the fuselage. This is also honestly one of the more uh, logical areas for me to start working on uh, without knowing what engine I'm gonna put in this. Um, some of my fuel system is, is gonna be on a bit of a delay and not wanting to block off access to the rear fuselage uh, I'm going to hold off on putting these skins on for good. Um, so with that, let's take a look at what it takes to put a panel in a plane.
I think my vision for this was vastly different than how it played out, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make this work. So the instructions say something about twisting this panel to get this piece in uh, and then this cheeky little comment about the guy who designed it swears it'll fit. Um, and at first it was like one of those little puzzles and I was getting incredibly frustrated and it turns out it's much easier than I made it out to be or the instructions. You can just go like this and then push it back, bam little tip for y'all. I really feel like this piece is turning out excellent. Like it's it's just really, it's almost there and it's really nice. Now it's totally disappointing that it's gonna be at the heart of this thing, completely invisible. Meanwhile, all the pieces that I've completely blundered are on full display in the middle of the cockpit, but it's turning out really nice. If I ever enter this in a show, I'm just gonna have to tell the judges, go ahead, grab yourself a flashlight, uh, get up under the, the panel there, get the trophy ready, because this thing looks good. All right, so I'll admit, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, but I think this is gonna help me fit some of these brackets. And yes, it's fun. Uh, this is pretty cool. have a whole lot of confidence in what I'm doing here, but I know that in order to get all this to fit, I need to make sure the skin fits. I'm sure everybody's wondering what flimsy excuse I've prepared uh, to make it sound like putting the skin on was a requirement, but I swear it was. Uh, like everywhere else on the plane, the skin really helps align the underlying structure. 
And so in order to make sure that I have everything where it's gonna wind up, I've got the skin on to help pull it together. With that, I'm gonna head underneath the panel here and start to match drill and final drill uh, a lot of the brackets that I've created so that I can then pull this apart, prime it, and put it together. Now, when it goes together, the skin will remain off. I wanna make sure that I have ample access to the back of the panel until my wiring is complete. And so I won't put this skin on until I'm required to put it on, which will be when I start to address the canopy. I gotta be careful. I can't put too much weight forward of these saw horses. This whole thing could come crashing down. That would be ugly. Um, I gotta figure out what I gotta do in here so I can get it done and get the heck out. Uh, I spent the last uh, couple hours staring at this thing um, and I'm, I'm trying not to paint myself into a corner but it's difficult um, there's things you got to match drill but you want to make sure that that you drill them uh, in a position that's gonna work, quite frankly. For example, there are no pre-drilled holes for riveting the firewall to the center rib. And I think that is because this center rib doesn't exist if you have a tip up, or it, it does, but it's a slightly different form. Um, and so you could just go ahead and align it, you know, like it wants to right now, and pop some holes in here, but you'd be pretty bummed out when you went to put your top skin on because it wouldn't line up. In fact, that's what the sloppy green line is right about here, is that's where that rib ultimately needs to be when the skin's on. Um, and there are a lot of pieces like that. And that's why I spent some time underneath this with the skin on, but I can't get to everything. And so I'm trying to sit here and make sure that I'm match drilling and, and aligning things, how they're finally gonna sit so that I don't wind up uh, really disappointed in myself later. Uh, and just in case you had any doubts, um, no, the instructions say nothing about any of this. In fact, they don't even say anything about riveting these two together, but the, there's some rivets in the plan, so I assume uh, I have to do this. Uh, I got the laser out because I think everybody's aware I love overcomplicating things, but I think it's gonna allow me to uh, trace this line of rivets on top and go straight down with that, assuming everything's level, which should allow me to place these rivets accurately. I will, of course, find a way to double check my measurements. All right, so I stepped away for a couple days, uh, but I think I can step back into this knowing what I need to do from here, because I'm sharp as a whip. I think I just need to pre-drill a lot of the inner structure and of course the holes that I was making on the front firewall, and then I will remove all of this uh, and adjust some parts to get to fit a little better. And I think I can prime this thing.
So I've got these holes. Uh, they needed to be dimpled. Everything else on this firewall was dimpled way back at the beginning of the fuselage build. Uh, these holes are just now being dimpled, and I don't have the ability to throw this thing onto the dimple table. Um, and unfortunately, my yokes for the pneumatic squeezer only allow me to get really to the top one or two dimples. So I went ahead and used a long C clamp I had with my dimple dies in blocks of wood to squeeze the remaining dimples. However, this last one down here, even my C-clamp wasn't long enough, so I have returned from the store with a longer C-clamp. And I think this will allow me to get to that final dimple hole. So these parts are all now just right next to me and they are drying, they're curing. It's a little cold here, it's a little damp. Um, and so I'm going to give them a few extra days to make sure they're nice and hardened. Now, I actually wrestled with the idea of not priming these, priming these in AXO so that I didn't have to wait for them to cure for so long, or priming them white. Ultimately, I decided white, not because you're going to see it, not necessarily because it's in the cockpit with everything else white, though that does make me happy. Um, it, it really came down to one fact, and that is, at times, this area will be cramped. And I will probably, at some point in my life, be under here with a flashlight trying to chase a wire, and I figured having everything be painted white is gonna help reflect some light, um, but not so much as like bright bare aluminum, where then I would be dealing with a fun house mirror-like effect, um, and I just thought that would be a pain in the ass. So, ultimately I went with the white. I think I'm gonna be really happy with it. Uh, the part I'm already happy with is where these uh, canopy decks transition to the forward canopy deck. Uh, this forward piece came out looking great. It's going to match this very, very nice. And as you know, just about none of the white really matches any other piece of white on this. So I'm happy I can at least get that done correctly. That about brings us up to current. Um, now, what am I going to do next? We're going to finish out this canopy section. I am going to run some fuel vent lines. I would love to run some fuel lines, but first I got to figure out what engine I'm going to put in this thing. So we're going to hold tight on that. Uh, but fear not. I'm expecting a finishing kit soon, and I still have a number of items up my sleeve to keep working on this uh, while I plan out some of these next steps uh, on the build. With that, I think everybody's caught up to where I'm at on this thing, uh, depending on when this actually sees the light of day, um, but I'm excited. I'm going to get back to working on this so that we've got more footage to review, uh, hopefully a short time from now. In the meantime, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I appreciate all the comments, keep it up, and we'll see you soon.